Welcome and thank you for joining us. It's Nicole and Dave, Perfectly Twisted. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you too. We missed a week last week. We missed an episode, but um for good reason was, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, <laughs> it was great. We did the TCA uh summer press tour for the Baywatch documentary, and um it was a lot of fun. It's funny, the older now that I'm older, I can enjoy these things so much more. Like when you're in your comfortable in your own skin, you're not nervous. Um, all of these things make it so much more enjoyable where I would have dreaded this, um, my, as my younger self, you know, um, can you, ex can you explain, I know you've been through this multiple times, but to the, the people who have followed you, watched you who obviously love entertainment. Can you explain exactly what this is and how it works and why they do it? Well, it's um, the Television Critics Association. So what it is, is all the news out out outlets gather together for a handpicked of new shows that are coming out or new seasons of shows. Um, and it's an opportunity for um, you to go. They did it in a hotel. And so um, you go from like room to room and um, you do like sit down video interviews and you sit there and then the, the journalists come in and out. Um, you go into certain rooms and do like photo shoots. You go into, um, you sit on a panel of numerous with in front of numerous um journalists and they all get to ask you questions and you answer together as collectively as a group um so it's sort of like knocking out a lot of press in one bang but um it was interesting because the tca actually contacted abc news and hulu and asked for us to be there so that was sort of exciting cool. and the energy was good we were really well received you know you never know things can go Either way with Baywatch. Um, so it was really, really welcomed with open arms and it was a great feeling, great energy. How long is that day? I mean, it sounds like it's a long day. It is a long day. Um, I got there probably about 9, 830, 830 in the morning and left about 530 in the evening. Okay. It's not too long. It's nothing crazy. Yeah. But it is it is exhausting, like talking and listening and doing all that yeah, moving around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to be on with your best effort for that entire time. Yeah. Your brain is going. So it's, um, yeah, it feels longer than it probably really is. But I had a great time. Um, and it ends with like a mixer in the, in a bar area. And, um, you just sit and casually talk with journalists, come up to you. It's, it's a fun, it's a great, they, they do a great job organizing it. It was really fun. You know, I know you've had a chance to, you know, see the people you used to work with, you know, probably more recent than the other people that were with you. But I, I'm guessing the way I haven't seen, obviously, what you did with Baywatch, but I'm guessing you did your interviews, you know, solo. And then all of a sudden those people were in a room together, maybe for the first time in a long time. Am I wrong on that? Um, first time in a long time. We didn't do them solo. We did like groups of three. Okay. Um, but um yeah, it's great. It's, it's nice when everybody's together because the pressure is not just on you, except when we sat down at the panel, the opening question was for me. And I was like, oh, here we go. And we didn't know what the temperature in the room was until they start asking the questions. You know, you don't know. You don't know how they feel about the show and doing um, a docuseries on it. But so right out the bat, it was like the question is for Nicole. And I was like, oh, of course, hot seat. But it was um, it was wonderful. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Really good time. Really happy for um, the docuseries to get that kind of recognition. It was, uh, for me, it was cool because, you know, you've brought many of them on this show. And so yes. to, to see you there in the middle and to see the smiles and the people, we know their personalities and the audience on this show has been able to learn their personalities. It was, it was cool to follow. So, I mean, if, I imagine most of the people that are listening to Perfectly Twisted right now follow Nicole on Instagram. And so to to see everyone there, I, I don't know, I enjoyed it. Like I put yeah. a smile on my face seeing you around all those people. And it's fun when you do a panel like that because you have your people who are um, direct and well-spoken and, you know, really composed. And then you have your other um, actors who are more of a personality. I'm not sure they answered the question. Um, they go into different stories and that don't have anything to do with what the question was, but it adds like a flavor. You know what I mean? It adds yeah. like um, a fun factor. So when you have such a big diverse cast like that, it, um, it can get interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, no, ab- ab- absolutely. That's that's cool. I don't know. I thought I thought it was it was fun to watch. It wasn't my long day, and I know we we missed the show last week because of it. But it was it seemed for me it was exciting to see how you spent your Wednesday last week. It was pretty cool. It was really cool. And then you want to know something else that happened to me that was really cool is um, yeah. a friend of mine. Um, shout out to Paula. Thank you, Paula. Um, she got me a uh, birth star chart reading with Allie, you know, of James and Allie. Yeah. Um, and so she read me my chart. And it was so interesting and made so much sense. You know, I just went into it like, oh, this is just going to be fun. And um, I mean, God, stuff was on the nose. It was it, really? it was just really like she knew things. She was telling me things about myself that she would never know. Things that I don't even I haven't told anybody, you know, things that are inside. She just by knowing where my where the stars are aligned and the sun and the moon and in which house and all of this stuff. But she, you know, she told me stuff about my childhood that I was like, oh my God. And um, <laughs> she told me stuff that's going to happen in the future that I, for myself, um, are yearning for, but I don't talk about it. I don't tell anybody. It's personal, you know, thoughts yeah. and what I want for myself and everything. And she was like saying it all. It was just really, really cool. It. And she's so sweet. Cool. She's so pretty. Um, really good soul, that that girl. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. You've had an, a, a kind of really a, a very memorable week, haven't you? <laughs> I really have. Yeah. I really, really have. have. Um, so it looks like I had my last treatment yesterday on the 16th. Today's the 17th, folks. Yes. So people who are listening, we shoot um, on Wednesdays and it drops on Mondays. So sometimes we're a little bit off with um, things aren't as current as they could be. But um, so, yeah, I mean, if my protocol is on point, um, that would have been my last chemo treatment. I go Fantastic. today to meet with the um, oncology surgeon um, and see you know, what he has to say about it all. And then I will eventually meet with a plastic surgeon and, um, and I will have to have imaging done in between all of this too, so that they know what they're dealing with. So, um, my oncologist seems to be very confident that that the chemo has done its thing. It's strange for me because I can feel my tumor. I can feel the mass. I mean, You know, this was a huge mass. It was 10 centimeters. It's a big, big thing in there. And so I can feel it and it's still there. Like there's yeah. still a big lump. So he said that, no, it can build like weird tissue around itself to try to protect itself. Um, all these things. So um, there's just stuff that can happen as to why I feel it. So I'll be interested to see what the oncology surgeon has to say because, um, you know, I get super like, whoa, hold on. I don't want to say this is my last treatment because I feel this motherfucker. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is all, again, awaiting. <laughs> you know, now it's going to be, this is a lot of anticipation. Um, I'm back in that. For a while, I was like pretty calm because I was just doing the treatments, right? I was just getting through the treatments and um, managing that. I, I kind of found a, a p- place of peace with that. Now we're back to testing again and meeting new doctors and hearing what they have to say because in my when I was originally diagnosed um, the oncologist I had met with it's not the one I'm working with now he thought by looking at the mammograms and let's not forget when you have dense breast tissue folks um, the mammograms are not it they, they just don't give a clear picture of it so he had thought we were just going to do a lumpectomy and some radiation and you know poof we were going to be done and it wasn't until I met with the oncology surgeon that he said, no, 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 no. I'm looking at other things. This is much bigger. This is this is a bigger deal. You've got to get into chemo right away. So my like association with meeting with an oncology surgeon is like bad news. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, I'm you know it's a little worrisome with that. But um, how do you feel after your last your last chemo? I mean, I keep. <laughs> I've made up this story in my head that I'm not going to have any side effects because I'm just so happy. <laughs> I would do the same thing. My brain yeah. would go the same way. I mean, why not? Although I feel the grumpiness coming on. Um, that's the one thing. I think that's the one thing I hate the most yeah. about the um, the side effects. The body pain, yeah, it sucks. All, all that stuff sucks. It does. Being tired, having brain fog, all that stuff sucks. 
But the two things that really bother me the most is the taste in the mouth. And it feels like this hot, yucky chemo mouth. It's so gross. Um, that and the grumpiness, like every fucking thing gets on my nerves, everything. And like even the TV, the, every, everything bothers me. I am grumpy pants. Um, and I don't like that. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. So, and I made the mistake of drinking coffee, which adds to it. So I'm like, I've got to get out of, I've got to stop drinking coffee while I'm go for the next few days so that I'm not. I mean, it makes you agitated. Anybody. Coffee does. Is it just that kind of that yeah, rush? Coffee of... kind of gets me a little bit anxious. Yeah. Um, and so it adds to anything that's not going. If I have any kind of anxiety, it just adds to it. So that's a stupid move to drink coffee. Um, yeah. So I don't want to you know, be on trial for murder. So I'm going um... <laughs> to just stay in the house. Everyone just stay, just in, the stay in the house. Yeah. Just everybody leave me alone. It's okay. So Nicole leaves the house. You stay in the house. Everybody stay in the house. Yeah. I'll um, everybody stay away the, from me. The, 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 no, I, I understand. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's been an amazing run. You know, I said at the very beginning, um, I appreciate the fact that you shared your story here. I think so many people have said that to you as well, that you've, you've shared your story. I, I don't know if it's my age, but all of a sudden, I'm running into more and more people who are going through, you know, your road. And uh, a friend of mine, actually, right now as we're talking, just started an hour ago his first session, Ugh. and and you just sit there and you you, know, you can't stop thinking about it because just like in your situation, everybody, you know, we want the best for you, and we're we're glad to see where your spirits are. And even if you drink the coffee and you might be a little agitated, we're happy that you're talking to us and sharing the story, you know. And it's. It is. It's. It's. It's scary for you know for everyone. I, it, you know, it, I know you aren't a huge baseball fan. Yesterday was the Major League Baseball All Star Game, and they stopped the game every year. Nicole in the fifth inning, and they make everyone, if you someone that you're thinking of that's fighting cancer, that you hold up a sign in front of your chest, oh. and you're to look at a stadium of Full. you know forty five thousand people standing up, and people had multiple signs. And you're just going, it is, it's a battle and it's scary for everyone that, that loves that person as well. It is, it is. And it's, it, it, it's such a warm community. It's such a friendly community and a supportive community. I, I just, like there was a woman in um, my treatment yesterday and she was with her daughter and she was starting her first and she was so nervous and the daughter was all anxious because when you find out you're not just in there for chemo day, you are back. You are there every other day. And um, there's just so much that goes into it. And yeah. um she was just so panicked. So I went up to her um, and and just had a chat with her. And I think it really helped. Nice. And, um, you know, it's just those kinds of things. So many people did that for me. So I, you know, want to give it, I want to do it back because um, it, there is so much of the unknown and it can be so overwhelming. So um, just like, you know, randomly, it was so weird. I had seen a post of Shannon Doherty from her podcast and she was going to get a port. And she was freaking out about the port and she was so depressed about the port because I guess she hadn't had one up until now. I'm not really sure. Or maybe she had had one and taken it. I don't know. But she was stressed out about getting the port. And I messaged her or I left a comment saying um, that I too hated my port and it took a while to get used to it. But you do get used to it and wishing her love and everything. And then, bam, yeah. she passed. And I was just, whew, it's just that one hit hard because – you know, she had breast cancer and, yeah. um, I've known her for, since we were really young. Um, we've worked together on some things and she just such a fighter. She's, she's always, she was always such a, um, determined, serious. I mean, she had, she was fun and funny too, but she, she was, she was just very determined, strong, confident lady. Um, and as a child even, and so I know that's how she was able to fight for so long because she's yeah. just a, you know, when she makes, when she sets her mind to something, she definitely would go do it. So, um, yeah, really sad, sad, sad day for that. Yeah. I think that one was, I mean, for, for anyone who, you know, obviously we watch TV and we follow entertainment there's so it was, it's really strange that they say it goes in threes. There were about, you know, four big deaths over the weekend, of, of people that we follow shannon doherty though when you go 53 years old and you go yeah, and it's, it's too young. young it's young 
Way right? too young. I mean, no offense to anyone else who passed away, but 53 is is young and it's not supposed to go that way. And when you listen to, you know, the comments she made about, you know, before she died about, hey, you know, I'm not afraid of death, but I don't want to die. You yeah. know, I like, you know, and, and you know, I mean, she's fighting for her life and it's extremely sad, extremely really? sad and scary. Yeah, really, really sad. Yeah. It's a terrible disease. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this as well because I, I, I'm not going to mention names, but you know, off there we've mentioned people that are in your business that are sick or fighting something that you know because you're inside, you know, the circle. You know, we talk about how people you you can read as many magazines as you want and watch as many TV shows as you want. You're never going to be inside the circle, you know, and um, like you're you're aware of a lot of things that are going on before the the public is aware. You know, yeah. and um, so I, I don't want to say you aren't ever surprised on things, but you, you unfortunately, because you're in, being inside the circle, good and bad, you get bad news before a lot of other people get bad news. True. True. Um, yeah, it's weird. We're weird, weird world. Weird. Life is strange. <laughs> Life is really strange. It but um, a lot um I, I wish I, I how to say his name properly. Thick not Han, right? Hey, let people read it, figure it out. I, don't ask me. He's very, if you hold it to the camera, it's up to you to, to say it the right way. How's yeah, that? well, don't count on me. But he, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's thick. Well, anyways, T-H-I-C-H-N-H-A-T-H-A-N-H. He's a very, very famous Buddhist philosopher. Um, and has a lot of theories. This one, The Art of Living that I've been reading, I didn't really know which one this was about, but it's about how um, you're never really born and you never really die. Everything is like a continuance um, yeah. um, with nature, with people, with earth, everything. You, every, and anything you do lives on. Um, so it's been a really interesting and coincidental read. I didn't know what I was getting into. and I, I read it when I'm doing um, my treatments. Okay. Which is really funny because I wear these big mittens that are um, frozen, so it keeps my hands frozen. <laughs> Trying to read a book, and these mittens. I must like change the idiot. page. I pull it out really quick and flip the page and put the mitten back on. <laughs> Two mittens holding the pages down, and I read really fast. So it's yeah. like I, I just am a disaster. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is funny. That 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 is funny. So. Um, Overall, again, it's it, it's summertime. You're you 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 finished your chemo treatment, and you said you have a bunch of uh, doctor's appointments still coming up. It's not yeah. like a, it, it's over, and you know oh, everything no. goes back to normal by you know August first. It's not that. No. Are you getting a chance to enjoy your summer at all? Um, a little bit, yeah. I've had some beach days. Um, it's kind of you're not supposed to be out in the sun. My skin burns so fast, um, incredibly fast. So it's like. I look, you know, I'm covered everywhere, but the sun still gets you. So I just have to be careful with that. My daughter's birthday is coming up um, July 29th. She'll be 13. So we are going to celebrate down in Huntington Beach. Uh, Yeah. Um, So hopefully I'll be, I'm going to be feeling better by then. The timing of, I've been very fortunate in the timings of things like the TCA. If it had been any other week, I probably would not have been able to attend it fell right in my good week, my best week. Her birthday falls right in my best week. So um, there have been many blessings through it all. You know, yeah, I haven't missed out on anything huge. So um, I'm really super appreciative of that. But speaking of summer um, alert, um, I will say that this company sent me the products. Uh, This isn't something I purchased, but um, it's called Evolve Together. And um, it's all their stuff is biodegradable, reusable, dissolvable, recyclable, all the materials. Um, It's made in the USA. It's a woman-owned manufacturer. And um, they use all plant and vitamin-powered ingredients. So it's fantastic. The packaging is super cute. This um, This is their deodorant. Um, their deodorant runs um, $24 for one, um, which I think is a good price because things that are all, why is it that when things are good for the earth and good for your body, they are double the price? We've got to get out of that, but um, it is. But the, So I feel like they're very um, reasonably um, 
priced. And it, the deodorant, they have like rose mandarin, cardamom and wood, sage lemon, really great, beautiful scents. This is their hand cream. And I love it because it's in tin, which we know is good. And then it comes with this little key to roll it down. Look at which that. I love because <laughs> whenever you do this with a tin, it always ends up cracking when you have to do it yourself. So I love this. Um, their lip balm is really nice. Um, packaging is really cute. Um, and it's the lip balm is not sticky. It's not thick. It's really like nice and light and smooth. Um, that The lip balm is 26. Um, the hand cream is 30, but really great. Like the lip balm is like lavender, chamomile, guava, pineapple. So I've really been enjoying using their, their products. And of course they keep disappearing because Keegan keeps um, <laughs> grabbing. She knows I don't need deodorant right now. So she's like, oh, not. <laughs> I found the lip balm in her room this morning. It's like, where is that? I found it. But um, love, loving this product, love everything about it. Everything. And the scents are really light. They're not heavy, heavy, perfumey, super light, super smooth, just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So um, check them out. Good deal. Good yeah. deal. Did you get a chance to catch up on uh, New Jersey and Orange County Housewives? I did. Super fun premiere of Orange County. Um, Alexis is back and she is rude. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. She didn't you feel like she was just rubbing it in Shannon's face? Like she was on a mission to make Shannon feel bad. And Shannon, by the way, looks fantastic. Okay, Let, uh, let's start there. All right, because I got comments for all that stuff. All right, it, was, it took a lot for me not to contact you right after the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Shannon has never looked better. Okay, right? so my my question is, what did she do? If someone said to me, "Well, she lost a bunch of weight," I go, she "You did. sure that, that was it?" I mean, yeah, she looks, she lost weight. Do you think that was it? Or do you think there was work? Also um, she done lost because... a lot of weight. I know she dissolved a lot of that filler she was putting in her face. And I'm sure she's had some like zhuzhing. I'm not sure. But I don't think she, I don't think she's had any major work done. It's kind of amazing how losing weight will make you look younger and better yeah. on certain people. She's like me. We cannot carry weight well. Um, when I swell, I look wrinklier, puffier, older. It's just... Um, it's just a fact. I just look, I look younger, healthier, and better, thinner. Some people can carry weight and they look great no matter yeah. what. Um, and I feel like Shannon, uh, the weight is a lot of it. And I know she was dissolving fillers. That has a lot to do with it. And I think she probably got, you know, a little zhuzhed up um, by the right doctor. That's just my yeah. breakdown. Yeah, I, I was curious too, though, because I, we've watched her on TV for 10 years and She's never looked better than she did uh, at the, that you know, party, the right? She, she, yeah, yeah, she looked great. Great, she she did. So Alexis coming back. Well, um, I think. I mean, I'll be honest. For me, I'm like, all right, Alexis is back. This is the craziest story that of all the guys in in the world, she ends up dating the guy that Shannon was dating. You know, I mean, it's just. I'm like, okay, now we're talking. For me, entertainment wise, I kind of like the drama of it. That's why I watch the show. If it was in my neighborhood, it would make me uncomfortable. But because it's a TV show, I'm like, I'm all in. Like, I couldn't wait for this. I love the fact it was addressed in the first episode. It wasn't yeah. like, hey, let's just be at a party together and act like this isn't going on. Yeah, she's sleeping with the guy that you were sleeping with a year ago at this time. This is outstanding. Like, I was almost standing up in my living room watching this, <laughs> this moment. Now, Alexis could have handled it a little bit nicer, right? But yes, she's she could have had is. much more grace. I thought it was kind of yeah. gross. It um, was. You know, but it I, was gross. I, I was there for the gross. I hate to say it. I was there. I was there for the gross. Sorry, I had a baseball in my hand. I just put, I was like, <laughs> as we're talking, I'm like, well, what's in my hand? I didn't even realize I picked up a baseball. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it it was it was kind of it was it was gross. But she's exactly what she was before. Yeah, I hate to say it. She's a hypocrite. She's one of those people that hides behind religion that can be as mean as can be. Tamara does the same damn thing. Yeah, you know. And what happened to Tamara, Nicole? Uh, Tamara usually gives you about one or two episodes where you're like, hey, it's going to be a different Tamara this year. And then you realize she's the same bitch she's always been. She was yeah. a bitch from the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, hey, we're not even going to play the game this year. This year, we're just going to show everybody what I really am. I mean, just keep keep it real, I guess. Um, but she yeah. was definitely out, over, you know, definitely outshined by Alexis. Alexis just went in there to rub it in Shannon's face. Ooh. And I feel like didn't um Alexis and th that boyfriend start dating like really quickly after the breakup? Like it yes. was like almost so 
John, John, John Jansen. Right. And yeah. um, so it's sort of like, is he seeking out them? Is, is this something he's doing? Like that kind of Slade smiley vibe. Yeah, that's my belief. Come on. And she probably saw it as an opportunity. I feel like they looked at each other as opportunists, like an opportunity. Yeah. They met up. There had to, there, there must be some physical attraction. I'm not saying there isn't, but um, they both probably, my, my, you know, the, the jaded side in me thinks that what's running their relationship is they both see opportunity to stay on the show. Alexis Could I agree more? On and him to stay. So I thought he was one of those guys, you know, you always get the guys that pull that, hey, you know what? I'm dating this guy, but he doesn't want to be on camera. I thought he was one of those guys at first. Now, all of a sudden, he had, it's the Slate thing. And she 100%, I think, looked at it. This is an opportunity to get back on the show. Yep. And being so mean in, in the first episode, I think she understood, hey, I got to be part of the drama to be a mainstay on these shows. I mean, you can't just go on a show and, and not be a character. You have to give a reason for people to watch. I mean, Teresa's made a living off of it. Yeah, 100%. And then, you know, you have where Shannon is uh, – not Shannon. Um, Debr De What's Debro's name? Sorry. My uh, Heather. Heather, Heather DeBro, yeah. Um, she's having a party and she says she wants to invite everybody. Well, I didn't see you inviting Alexis to all your other parties last season. <laughs> like, good point. What, what, all of a sudden, this is how. So, this is where you know it's produced and set up because, yep. you know, she had to be invited. So, there was Shannon, I mean, um, Heather to invite her and get her back into the mix. So, you know, yeah, this is all, you know, they set it up like this. And I'm here for it too. I'm here for the drama. <laughs> That's what yeah. I was waiting for you to say. Also That's glad it's not in real for. life and not in my real yeah. life. It's, yeah. I was it's waiting for lot. you to say I'm here for it. I, I'm, I'm here for it. And when they showed the future stuff of, hey, you know, how are things going with the FBI? And I'm like, all right, this is going to be great. Like, I'm really looking forward to this season. Oh, know? yeah. Me too. It's going to be, this is going to be a hot season. Um, randomly, like, I've been getting, like, one of my posts must have gone through a weird algorithm because I've got random people like liking them um, that are oh. like celebrities. But it was funny because I saw in um, in the last couple of days, it was Robin Dixon liked one of them and then um, Margaret. And I got super excited over the Margaret one. I was like, right on. So did you watch, <laughs> um, did you watch New Jersey? I did watch New Jersey. I want to ask you real quick a question about Heather before you go to New Jersey. Oh, okay. Okay, is Heather doing her best to jump shows, go from Orange County to Beverly Hills? Because she's, moved, I don't know. I mean, it's it's it don't and it sounds bad to say, but it seems like she's out money the people in Orange County that she should be with the Beverly Hills people, and the fact she's in Beverly Hills and she's not afraid to say what she owns and what she has, like she almost like she would is she's, I think she thinks she's with the wrong class of people. And Orange County, for people who don't understand Southern California, Orange County is beautiful and very expensive. It's not It's not like that. It's just the name Beverly Hills is a different name. Yes, and it's a different caliber of money. But no, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of very wealthy people in Orange County. Okay, so I think that she wanted to be, under the, under the guise that she wanted it to be um, closer for working because she wanted to pursue acting career. But the truth is everything is remote. Um, there's not a lot of casting going on. It's a yeah. really kind of dead industry right now. Um, but if you audition for something or have a meeting with something, it's Zoom. <laughs> and it's, yeah. you know, it's you put yourself, um, you record yourself and you send it to yeah. them. So I, I'm not really sure or if she just wanted a cha change of pace. Um, but then the jaded side of me is like, yes, yeah, she wants to be um, Beverly Hills housewife, which I don't hate. I would not mind seeing that for a season. I wouldn't either. I don't know. I don't know how close she is it seems like all of these bravo celebrities celebrities know each other um and a lot of them have relationships so i'm not sure like what inner relationships she has with people at beverly hills so um if she does that could be really interesting um mashup i kind of am not i'm not hating that idea yeah i'm with you i, I wouldn't i wouldn't mind watching that either i'm kind of curious to know how she'd fit in uh, money wise, she'd be fine. I mean, she, she could, she could carry her own obviously with all the other people, but, um, I don't know. It just seems strange. Like, cause last year she wasn't really welcomed with a lot of people. She thought a lot of people turned on her and she seemed kind of disgusted with everyone. I was like, is she trying to switch shows? Just, just curious. Wait, wait, yeah. Thought. But and she yeah. appeared, um, she appears on million dollar listing again. Um, you know, so she's 
buying and selling on Bravo um, for the yeah. cameras. So you just never know what people, what, what they're driven by. You just don't know. Because while they're buying and building in Beverly Hills, they move back to the Balboa Bay Club is where they're they're renting, which I can't even imagine how much that costs. Um, so Terry's closer to work. So this whole, it's just all very like, are they going to keep a place in Orange County and be in Beverly Hills? Is this for show? Is this for flipping? Is this for profit in real estate? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm here for it. All right. So another question on this one too is it's always funny to me how people get in front of the camera and either you love the camera or you hate the camera. Like I'm never doing that again. All right. You know, I know where my place is. I'd rather not be seen. I think both of them, Terry and Heather love that camera. I'm not they sure who love loves it. it more. I know. Like it, Terry, I keep thinking in my mind, thinking 15 year old Terry in school wasn't the cool kid in school. Now yeah. he can't wait that everybody he went to high school with is saying, Look at Terry. It's on TV yeah. nonstop with his $170 million mansion or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. just going, Holy cow. And oh, yeah. Good, hey, good for him. He, he got what he won, I guess. But boy, it seems like a guy who was, who was a doctor loves that camera more than anything in life. He, he loves really that. Does. He loves the He lives for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They he both absolutely do. does. They both All right, I real wrote the back to this, but you you brought up New Jersey. Yes, I'm watching New Jersey. What what, what are your feelings? Well, um, I mean, I guess I'm going to start with uh, Jen putting her hands on Danielle. Um, so unacceptable, so gross, and trying to act like um, the martyr. I'm just like, when are they going to call her out on it? Like. Are they are they're just going to go with I'm, I'm not sure what happened because nobody really did actually see it. And they showed the footage where Teresa did look away at that moment. So um, are they going to wait until the season comes out and they see it to see that Jen was very aggressive and it could, like should not have done that? I mean, I, I don't know. I just she's playing like, oh, I just pushed her because I could smell her breath. Um no, you don't, you don't get to do that. You take a step backwards, <laughs> you yeah. back up, you don't push. Um, so I just feel like I can't believe that it's down to that. I can't believe that that's, that's what we're talking about. But, um, and then it's so sad to see Margaret's husband looks like maybe he has pancreatic cancer. So, um, is it prostate make... or pancreatic? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> prostate. Okay. Oh my God. Thank you prostate cancer, um, which is also so common. Um, so let's hope his, if he has it, it's found so early that they can just get it out. But, um, what did you think about it? what did you think about the first or the, the um, last episode? I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a Jen fan, you know, it's, uh, it, I, the women are so different. Like I never lived on the East coast. I've lived in the South and I've lived in Southern California. I've never lived on the East Coast, but it is so stereotypical of what you think East Coast, New Jersey, Italian housewives are. And nothing against any anyone like I'm married to an Italian. It's but as as you you know grew up and you watch shows like Saturday Night Fever and you watch Welcome Back Cotter and The Sopranos, and you're going, Oh my gosh. And when you're looking at the crazy backgrounds of their houses, and you're going, This is right out of Goodfellas. Like it is, it is. Yeah. There's so many stereotypes that people say, oh, it's not really like that if you're Italian. And you're going, this they hit every there single one of them in these shows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's I just don't want to insult anybody as I'm saying this, but it is it is wild. And um it's, New Jersey is a lot like Orange County, don't you think? It's very yes. like um yeah. 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 You're you're hundred percent right. To be fair, you're you're hundred percent right on that. Uh when it got physical, um I'm 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 drawing a blank on uh when Danielle. Uh, Danielle, I said to I said to my wife, I made her watch the show. She doesn't watch the shows like you and I watch the shows. And I said, look, as a guy, and I've been in a few fights, I can tell I can read a fighter and I can read someone who's just a talker. Danielle's a fighter. Yeah. If Jen wants to sit there and pull that card, she can act as tough as she wants. There's a big damn difference of someone. You can see it in their eyes. Danielle, you give her a chance, she will tear you limb to limb with with physically. And she doesn't want to be involved in that. Nobody wants to be involved in that. The, in today's day and age, that's not the way to go. That's not yeah. the avenue to go. To, no, because she physical. retaliated throwing a glass, her glass right yes. at her, right? She well, did. I mean, and I think your instinct um is to throw whatever is in your hands, right? Like I I, I see, I don't yeah. think she thought this through. Oh, this is glass, yeah. this could hurt. You just 
you know, you yeah. throw whatever's in your hands. Yeah, don't I wouldn't mess Jen, don't mess with Danielle. Yeah. Um <laughs> Jen is just and just the way she just downplayed it instead of like apologizing and saying, I'm embarrassed. I shouldn't have done that. I just, I hate that part. But the pro- she's probably, Jen's a drinker too, right? So it's like yeah. she might not remember exactly how it went and they're not, she's not seeing the footage. And boy, yeah. is she in for a surprise. That was, she's in surprise. It was interesting. I thought when she was the guest on the Watch What Happens Live, when Andy was talking to her and Andy realized she was leaking show information. And uh, Andy wasn't, the look on Andy's face was disgust. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is our franchise and you're leaking, showing information to people that aren't involved in the show. What did was, she say? Uh, she, basically how she has a connection with bloggers. And that oh, she's, the blogger. yeah. And, um, and she tried to defend herself and saying, you know, everybody's, uh, you know, uh, every blogger is a fan. And the look Andy was like almost taken back. Like I knew there was somebody that was leaking information and now I know it's you. Like it was, uh, you know, almost like the Godfather, you broke my heart and he yeah. gave her that quick look. And someone took a screenshot of it when, went throughout social media of when Andy found out, you know, Jen was the one that was stabbing the show in the back. Well, I'm going to um, go rewatch that. I'm going to rewatch yeah. that session. Cause it's I right, did it's, watch it's, that. It's at, it's at the beginning. It's at the beginning. Yeah. And she's trying to defend herself. And then to look at his face when he's leaning back in his chair of, I can't believe you're, you you did this, you know? Because yeah, they go on to ask her, and what did you learn from this? And then she says, yes. oh, to never talk to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. She's Her and Teresa together are dangerous because they are mean. They yeah. are, they have mouths on them and they are not the brightest. And they're, they're, they're liabilities. They're, they're reckless. They, they, they just really are. They're live wires and they, um, they say whatever in the moment to make themselves look and feel better. And it's blatantly <laughs> untrue most of the time, but yeah, they're a, they're a toxic duo. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I'm, I'm enjoying the shows. I'll tell you right now. I mean, yeah. I'm enjoying, I'm looking forward to them. Uh, it's, I know. it's OC, one, come you know. on. Yeah. I'm so ready for it. <laughs> so ready for the next episode. Uh, 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 I have. All right. So I want to get to your mailbag. I got to tell you Saturday night, I was at a charity event. And I was that that no disrespect, but I was amazed at how many people came up to me and spoke about the show, the one we're doing right now, and people who follow the show. And a lot of them were were men, more were men than than women who said, "I love the show," Good and fun. they're following along and they're commenting about the different guests you've had. And um, I was I was excited about it. So um, oh, that's I, awesome. I had grabbed, so I grabbed a list of questions actually from a variety yeah, well, of people. While, while we're on that topic, please hit the like button. If you yeah, love, exactly. Subscribe love and like the up. show. <laughs> if you like it, show us with the like button. Exactly right. Good, 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 good uh, transition. Um, but yeah, I was so I grabbed uh, just different questions people threw at me. Asked Nicole okay. this, asked Nicole that, and so I don't have one in particular to say this is you know this is from this these people. But I was I was very surprised that how many men loved loved the show and had comments about different guests. I got to tell you, um, because you were with Carmen Electra, she was the one that people were requesting as as a guest in the future. So I said I don't know her relationship with Carmen, but. I'll tell you right now that was that that was one. So, um, but people love Tracy Bingham last week. They they loved everybody. They, everyone you've had on, they 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 liked a lot. I'm drawing a blank. I'm a, I'm gonna be embarrassed, but you're gonna help me out on this one. Uh, the favorite guest that people were saying to me was the person that put the shows together. He was very funny. Uh, he spoke about Grey's Anatomy and he talked about losing his hair and trying to find product uh, and i know right now you're having a hard time with names but he was a guest of ours and he goes that guy was funny as can be and he wasn't a big time celebrity he was kind of a behind the scenes person and um i'm drawing a blank right now too but he was the, he was the favorite he was the most entertaining funny guy people said they laughed the entire episode i'm not blanking on names i just don't remember that from an episode okay i'll i will get the name or we'll, we'll figure it out i feel bad putting you on the spot on this one but um it was oh, it, are you they talking about that, Paul Reddy, the casting director? You got it. Boom. Okay. Look at you. You didn't get Heather DeBro today, but you got Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul's a personal friend too. So yeah. But yeah, Paul no, my, my, my brain be. blinks in, in just the strangest yeah. moments. It's Mine like does it all the time. Show. And I, I didn't go through anything over the last three months, but it, my brain does it all the time too. No, Paul Reddy. Everyone thought he was he was well, funny great. as can be. 
Yeah. He's, he just cast some great new shows coming out too. Um, so if you don't follow him yet on Instagram, definitely do because um, some great shows he casts that are coming out. Awesome. All right. So we'll get to your questions here. It's, again, it's perfectlytwistedpod.com. Look for the mailbag and uh, go ahead and get your questions in and we'll get them on the show. Um, first one is, uh, Nicole, what was the most iconic movie of the 80s in your opinion? Oh, um, 16 Candles. That's what I said. Good job. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, said, nothing I, even close. I'm so glad you said that. That's what I said. I said 16 Candles. People fired back at me with Breakfast Club and Karate Kid. and Which were all and great, I, too. They were, they're all great. But I said 16 Candles uh, as well. There you go. Yeah. We awesome. have to pick one. That is the one. All right. Uh, Nicole, do you have a favorite quote? Is there a quote that you think of? Oh, I have a lot of them. All I do is read quotes all day long to inspire myself. Um, in the moment right now, my favorite one is that nothing is created, nothing is destroyed, everything's in transformation. Um, I think good. it's a great way to live. I think it's a great way to take a lot of pressure off, um, off yourself. And um, yeah, it's deep, but it's... Um, it's good. It's a good headspace to be in. There you go. I like it. I like it. The one I used to always say to my kids and, uh, they, they probably like enough. It was, and I, I took it from John Wooden, the old UCLA basketball coach, but it was always failing to prepare, failing to prepare is preparing to fail is what he would say. And I was like, Hey, you know what? Got to get ready for that test. Got to get ready for the game. Got to whatever. Everything is, you know, prepare. And, uh, and, it was always interesting to me that it always seemed to work out. And I seem like I, I remember that like crazy, but um, I, always a ton of different things in there. All right. Next thing, uh, Nicole, what's something surprising about you that most people don't know? Um, hmm. I'm a bit of a recluse <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm half like extrovert introvert but I can very much be an introvert. And um, as I've gotten older, I'm more comfortable being extrovert and being social and being myself. But up until not too long ago, um, I was very much insecure, very much in my own head, standing in my own way, um, not comfortable in my skin. It's taken me a long time really? to get here. Yeah. Wow, I think that would be surprising. That's interesting. And it's weird because when I hear people say, I met you so long ago and you were so kind or you were so nice, you're so down to earth. It's so, um, it's so like good to hear because it's sort of like, I'm going to use this really weird comparison, but it's sort of like, you know, when you drink too much um, and then the next day you're like, oh my God, what, what happened? And people go, oh, this was so great. We had such a good time. And you, you have that like sense of relief. I sort of have that feeling like with my youth is like how was it showing on your face what you were thinking inside? Did people pick up on it? Were you rude? Um, did your shyness come across snotty? Like all of these things. Um, so when I hear people and they say, oh, I met you and you were friendly and all, it makes me go, oh, because I don't know and I don't remember. And um, you never know what, because I have, <laughs> I what I do have to do is be conscious, try to be conscious of what the, my facial expression is because yeah. my face can show <laughs> show things that, that right? I probably should be doing. Yeah. I, yeah. Things show on my face, but, um, so I'm trying to learn to keep my face relaxed in all circumstances. One of my, one of my closest friends, she's around our age. She, she, uh, always says she used to be a mean girl, like going back. And, you know, now she looks back as you said, when you're a kid at any point, do you think you were ever like, like that, or just not sure that you were, I don't know what, what, what the word is. I like, don't know if I was ever a mean girl. I don't think mean girl is it. I just think I wasn't comfortable around people and I, um, uh, wanted to just get out of there. I always want to get out of there. Um, so I don't know if that could come across as being mean girl. That was, that was my fear. Yeah. yeah, I got that. I was so, as a shy kid, people always thought I was arrogant, but wasn't it at all. I just right. was, was a shy kid. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure there are people that think that about me too, but it is just refreshing when I hear that um, people thought I was nice and friendly and all that, but I'm yeah. sure there's other ones, but yeah, whatever. Absolutely. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, this is this is just one of the topics that came up the other day, and it's not directed at you, but everyone was talking. It just came up, and as we're wasting time, it was. Uh, have you ever talked yourself out of a ticket? Yeah, lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's the go to? What do you say? Okay, so the biggest one. I was driving like a dually or a big suburban or something. And I was trailing a trailer with dirt bikes in it. Yeah. And I was driving, I guess in um, the fast lane on the freeway, which I did not know you were not allowed to do. And I got pulled over. I got pulled and, over for that too. Yeah. And so yeah, when he pulled thing. me over, I like got all choked up. I was like all upset about it. And he was like, are you going to cry? And I was like, yeah. And um, he said, why? And I was like, because this is horrible. I can't believe I was doing that. I feel terrible. Um, a ticket is like the last thing I need. I might have been pregnant. Um, I, I really could have been pregnant too at the same time. And I just was like, I, um, and he, he was like, okay, all right. And, you know, that was just one. But yes, I've talked to myself out of. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Don't ever be ashamed of that. I was saying, you could talk yourself out, talk a police officer away from starting to write that thing. Fantastic. Well, yeah. It's not like. I've and, I've also had one on where purpose. once I hand them my ID, they see my name and they're like, oh, okay, don't do that again. Or someone, one cop had written the ticket already. He's like, I looked at my name and he's like, why didn't you just tell me who you were? I wouldn't have given you the ticket. I was like, because I don't like pulling that card. I'm like, yeah. do you know who I am? It's kind of like, yeah. hopefully they recognize. And um, so, yeah. Uh, you? Yeah. Have, yeah. You've gotten. Oh, I've talked to myself out of tickets. You know, I've, I've, I've done the same thing, but I, I got the ticket the way you said. I was pull, I was pulling something and no idea. I couldn't what lane I was supposed to be in. I was driving from San Diego to L.A. I was moving a bunch of stuff and then got pulled over. I got out of it. And it's because my father in law was with me and wouldn't stop talking. And uh, it drove the police officer crazy enough to say, just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he, gonna, he couldn't take it anymore. Because if this guy says one more word, I, I'm going to lose my mind. Just get, get the hell out of here. It was it was literally that my father in law drove him crazy. So like, that was, it. but it's a yeah, it's a good was, law. I understand why that's a law. Yeah, um, I do too. Yeah, in hindsight, everything in hindsight. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had no idea either. No idea. All right, last one for you, Nicole. What is your favorite magazine? Do you have a favorite magazine? Do those exist? Um, no, they really they really don't anymore. <laughs> but I do see like, them in the checkout line at the supermarket, but I you, don't you, really look at them. I mean, I, I love people. Um, people.com I feel is always fair. Um, I feel like they're fair and they're very informative and they usually have, um, things out before other people. Uh, they're the only magazine I get updates from. Let's just say that. Cool. Um, yeah. So I guess people.com cause I think it's I'm still one of the classier, um, yeah. publications. Yeah. I'm with you. If you're on an airplane, right. It used to be, oh, I gotta get on an airplane. Is there are people, you know, like, you know, yeah. yeah thinking what am i going to do to pass the time I i'm with you and you, you don't feel embarrassed to read it no like if back in the day you know if you were you bought a national Enquirer, you'd be embarrassed to get caught reading it right but oh, people well, magazine you aren't embarrassed by to being in it, it. God. <laughs> when, when i get my google alerts of like when magazines people yeah. is the one i do not panic about i and they also don't do this thing where um, this is what I hate about a lot of publications. So let's say like Daily Mail, which I can't stand. They're the worst. Um, they'll pu they'll publish something and then all the people will just repost and republish what oh. Daily Mail put out. And I hate that. People does not do that. They are so original. They write their own articles. They do their own oh. research. And that's really respectable in my eyes. I agree. I agree 100%. All right. If you want to get your questions in next week, uh, all you do is go to the website, perfectlytwistedpod.com, and uh, look for the mailbag right there and, and get your questions in. But that was that was a lot of fun. Again, it was it a was good response Saturday night when um, I, I didn't expect how many people came up to me to discuss this show. So that was really cool. Love that. It was really cool. Love that. Absolutely. And thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. We love you. And um, catch you on the next one.